Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the show. You know the po- you know the websites. You know the podcast. We're doing it. It's happening right now. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, uh, familypetancestry.com, and jackiecation.com. Go to that one. And um, allthingscomedy.com slash jackiecation, all lowercase, brings you to my hour special that you can download for an hour. Those are a lot of websites. Uh, there's also the iTunes URL, which I don't know offhand. You can listen to the show, of course, via iTunes and just on the player on JackieCasher.com or DorkForest.com or on the All Things Comedy SoundCloud page. But most people do it on iTunes, and you can review the show if you like. I sometimes read them. I haven't done a Dork Addendum in a while. I should get to it. The credits. Let's get to the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio, and we thank him for it. Vilmos fixes my website, and I thank him for that. And... Oh, Mike Rickberg composed the the opening song, and he sings it with his girlfriend, Sarah Cohen. Mike sings again at the end, words, lyrics he made up for the Mexican hat dance. On JackieCation.com, there's a lot of things going on. You can buy merch if you want merch. If you want T-shirts, working on a new shirt, working on a spooky reading girl T-shirt. Not yet available, but soon will be. Look for it on Facebook and Twitter and then eventually on the website. Also on the website, there are T-shirts and CDs and DVDs that you can get. You get a deal if you get more than one. There's a donation button. If you like the show, feel free to donate to the show. Uh, I'd love to to get some money because I will eventually, one of my mics went bad. Granted, I only need two and I have three. But one day, one of these other mics is going to go bad. I'm going to replace that one. So that's what I use the money for. And um, I'd love to uh, get support from everybody. But uh, other than that, I now have a Bandcamp uh, page, Bandcamp.com. It's probably the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. But on JackieCation.com, there's also my uh, schedule to see stand-up comedy. So if you ever want to see me do stand-up, check out the, the site. Or you can just email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com. All right, let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room, and I'm with Maria Tornberg. Welcome to the program, Maria Tornberg. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Now, people, I I didn't know. In 2000, I had just moved here to Los Angeles, and um, so I had been, it had been beaten out of me, all the joy of, of, of movies, mm-hmm. and people only wanted me to see the top AFI 100. So in 2000, you were in a movie called Super Troopers, <laughs> which was, from the look of it, craptastic, a comedy <laughs> Yeah, little softcore porny. It yeah. had some craziness, mm-hmm. and uh, and you played uh, part of a, a daring duo, uh, criminals, and you were the yeah. German, the sexy German lady who was like, was. "Fine, we're doing it." Yes. All right. How can I get out of this parking ticket? And just for the fun of it all, because I watched the clip. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow. Okay. Well, that looks like something a fourteen-year-old boy has been dreaming to watch for yeah. a thousand generations." Yeah. So. They're doing Super Troopers 2. Yes. And you're like, hey, uh, people loved me in that Super Troopers yeah. movie. I need work. Yeah. Well, actually, somebody wrote to me because, they're, they're, I mean, they have so many fans. It's right. It's this cult movie. And um, and so somebody wrote to me and said, hey, we heard that they're doing Super Troopers 2. And are you going to be in it? And I said, well, no, I'm not invited to come back. Right. And so he wrote a petition and put it on this <laughs> website called Bro Bible. Okay. And within two days, I got thousands of uh, people. are like, people. It's, when's this happening? Um, yeah, exactly. And they keep asking me, so so are you going to be in it? And uh, I don't I don't know yet. I think they're working on the final Final script, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and so we'll see. I don't know that people entirely understand how showbiz works. Uh, you're like, you can't just say, "Oh, I want to be on that," yeah, unless, of course, you're De Niro. Well, you know what? I actually, I have to disagree because I think oh, yeah? it's, yeah, I think it's look, it's different today, and especially with this movie because um, the fans are raising the money, right? Oh, and, aren't? Oh, they're doing a crowdfunding thing. Yeah, and and so you know, I, I think a lot of things nowadays you are. 
you are actually okay, dealing I with take the it back. audience directly. Yeah, and who's so helping they do making the film. Yeah, they do get to say. Yeah, it turns exactly. out. Yeah, all right. It's uh, <laughs> it's different when people are like, "Well, why aren't you on Letterman?" And I'm like, "Well, because Letterman has not invited me, and yeah. uh, there is no petition exactly to make Letterman get it together in his last yeah. two minutes on television." Well, I mean, this is a fun thing, and um, you yeah, know, Jay and, and Broken Lizard Company, they're a great company. I mean, comedy okay. company, and whatever happens. It's going to be an amazing film, and I'm right. just so proud that I was a part of it. What about one. the mustachioed guy that you were, who played your husband? What about his? Oh, a, a, anybody yeah. got a petition Philip on that Brennick guy? Meyer. Um, I, you know, I'm not. In, I haven't spoken to him in a while. But, right, right. But he um, should be on. He the, definitely should be in there as well. But or it should be addressed. I would like <laughs> exactly. it to be addressed if it is not addressed. Yeah. Okay. So everybody should know that uh, they can go to Maria Tornberg T O R N B E R G dot com. And then it's Maria Tornberg on Twitter, and then Tornberg Maria for some reason on Instagram. Did someone have Maria Tornberg I, on I, Instagram? Uh, maybe I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm not so good at all this stuff. So I'm. You know, who knows how it happened? Who happens. knows how it works? Fair but enough. I think uh, if you look for Maria Tornberg, you will find it anyway. Oh, that's exactly how I did. There was <laughs> yeah. a litany of things, including uh, now you do uh, headshots and 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 and. Landscape photography too. I do a lot of portraits, uh, yeah. um, headshots for actors. Yeah, um, that's that's a big thing. And uh, fashion, lifestyle, um, not so much nature and life. I saw much- I saw some of the nature stuff. Oh, yeah. I really like that under the uh, site yeah. called. I mean, the page called Places. I think. That's it. It's yeah. called Places. Yeah. Yes, it wasn't landscapes. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know a lot about photography, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. so. Let's, uh, but I, I wanted to, I mean, f- photography can be one of your dorkdoms, but I am torn. I, I always ask for a list, Rangers. Yeah. You know, I ask for a list of things of what people like a lot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, here's a name that I don't know. I don't know the, uh, the Japanese composer. Ruishi Sakamoto. I do not know. Ruishi Sakamoto. Ruishi Sakamoto. Yeah. All right, Ruishi Sakamoto. Uh, what kind of music it, uh, is he doing? What's his oh, buzz? Is it a man? It, it is I, a man. <laughs> He's Japanese. Yes. Excellent. Um, he, um, he made, do you remember the movie called A Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence? No, I do. Uh, David Bowie was in his Excellent. Vietnam. And um, the song, the soundtrack, he created that and oh, okay. was Oscar nominated. I think he may have won the Oscar for that. But right. uh, he sort of, he started this whole electronic wave a uh, long time back. Um, okay. Uh, so... So he, he's a he's a, a film composer. Yeah, but he's a he's symphonies. a composer. Yeah, he does a lot. He's a composer. He does beautiful sort of um, classical pieces, very melancholic, very emotional, okay. and very electronic and very experimental. And s- some of his music is not even doesn't even sound like music. They're just kind of notes, and they will just penetrate you into your soul and it does something like to you. Like held Creates. notes kind of thing? Like long? Well, just different notes and then sometimes it's very, it, um, you don't even, it, it, it's not even like a, a, a melody, it's just kind of sounds. Okay. And, but, um, and he works together, uh, collaborates with a lot of different musicians and it's it's just, he's just in my, uh, he's my inspiration when I write. and Okay, so yeah. he's great to work to, to some because yeah. it's instrumental. It isn't, there's no lyrics. It's... Sometimes it is, okay. um, but um, he's done so much music, but he's a genius. He's right. one of those, he's just a genius because when you listen to his music, you realize that, you know, he knows how to just create sounds to take you to places that inside of yourself and you just go That's to these cool. beautiful places. And I wrote uh, my last film that I directed, The Empty Space in Between, okay. to his music. And um, I'm using it in the film. Okay. It's, it's the music in the film. And without that, it wouldn't be the same film. And it is huh. it describes everything that this character was going through. And okay. It so, really takes you there. Oh, that's amazing. I yeah. Well, now, now I, I wish to... So he's got... It's not just... Uh, and again, when when music comes up, it's always a, it's a troubled thing. Yeah. He doesn't the guy just doesn't have a Casio, right? I mean, this no. is not just him on, on a keyboard going. <laughs> no. Hey, I can make that sound like a cymbal. So now and, let's yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but he's it's is he older? Has he been doing it for um, decades? I or? think he was. Yeah, I think he pro- he might be in his. Um, 60s now so that the the movie that you you, you spoke of that, my, that was, was in the not, 80s was in the yeah, 80s okay yeah. so it's like 30 years old 
And so he, but not the seventies, oh, like that 30 years up. I, I know. So sorry. <laughs> me. And I'm never accused of good math either, but good for me. And, uh, <laughs> so, okay. So, but that's neat. And, yeah. and the fact that it's so powerful that it can, yeah, it can so take powerful. you out of yourself and into wherever yeah. weirdo tomorrow land right. that, that just, he's come up with. It's comforting and it is, I go to places in it and it's deep and it's dark and it's sentimental and um, it just, it's like a relationship that I have with, and I actually saw him in New York, um, I don't know how many years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and there's another uh, um, musician, his name is David Sylvian and he's also very unique and okay. um, uh, I'm obsessed with him as well. Fair enough. And he works with Rishi Sakamoto. Okay. Um, sometimes, and they co- collaborate. And um, so I went to a concert and I saw David Sylvian, and then in the end, Rishi Sakamoto came on stage. And oh my gosh, that yeah, was beautiful. That's was, amazing. Yeah. So, so clearly, you know, it's always interesting with different worlds because you're like, oh, well, they all know each other. Yeah. And then you're like. Well, why would you, like, some people are like, well, why do you know that comic? And I'm like, because he's a comic. Why yeah. wouldn't I know that guy? And uh, and I don't know all of them. But, of mm. course, the, the fancy, you know, experimental musician guys all know each other. And yeah. and that's uh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, But I recommend you listen to some of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. That's awesome. Now, what got you into photography? Um, well, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, because I had directed a couple of films. Right. And, um. I wanted to... But didn't you start modeling? Well, I started modeling when I was 15. When you were a so, kid, yeah. Yeah, many, many years ago. So you were on the other side of it, though. I was on the other side of it. And then... Um, so writing was always the core of everything that I do. Storytelling. Okay. And um, so I thought I was going to be a writer. But then I became a model. And... Um, but I always knew I wanted to go to the States. I want to go to New York and study. And um, so after many years, I... Eventually went to New York and okay. started studying drama there, but also scene study and writing and directing. And and then I got the part in Super Troopers, right. which was one of the first auditions I ever went to. And, right. and then um, after five years in New York, I moved to Los Angeles. Okay. And so here... Um, here you can do anything. Yeah, here you can do anything. You literally <laughs> yeah. can do anything. I know. That's why I love this place. It's the, the greatest place on the earth. I know. You wake up in the morning and I'm thinking, hmm, what, what can I do today? It's almost like a sport. And sometimes yeah. it's you know, it's challenging, but... Right. I, but you can make up a job but out you of can nothing. Make it, you can make it up. You My know? favorite current job that uh, I've just heard of, uh, not even... I, the one I've just heard of, I can't even remember, but my favorite one that I have seen all over the earth now yeah. is the is the cutting of a cat's toenails. <sighs> I don't have a cat, uh, so uh, but somebody said to themselves, <gasps> people don't want to wrestle their cat and cut their toenails. I'll do it for $15, and wow. if I do 10 a day, that's a right, job. Right, and, and a lot of people have cats because a lot they're of people very have, weird and lonely. Re- well, in the middle of L, but even in the middle of anywhere, nobody, yeah. anywhere you go, you don't have to cut your cat's toenails. Someone what about will do birds? It. Because my bird you needs, have a, yeah, I have a parakeet and the nails are too long and, um, Oh, I I want to sh- Google the word we should uh, do, yeah, parakeet we- care because yeah. someone will probably drive over to your house yeah. in a van and help you out. Well, we have an iguana. Oh, you do? Yeah. And, uh, Andy, does it have nails? It does have nails and you have to, um, they are, uh, nobody get mad uh, because they are dead, right? They're nails. Right. So he has a kit that, that melts them down Ooh. and it doesn't hurt. Tiberius. Tiberius is fine. Or so you believe. Or so I believe. Well, he would, he would be stoic. Up. He is, he is, he is not that stoic. Okay. He is, uh, he's slow. He's not a bright animal right. because he's an iguana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he has a tiny lizard mind. Yeah. But if it hurts, he would, uh, hit you on the head with his tail. Oh, okay. So that's his thing where mm-hmm. he's like, eh, I'm not enjoying this. Right. Uh, and he would open his mouth and, uh, and kind of go, hmm. Not psyched. And then he would thwack, and then you'd get smacked on the, on the noggin oh, with, wow. with his tail. Is he really big? He is. He's about three and a half feet oh, long. Wow. So he is very large. Yeah. And I will periscope him after this because someone was like, will you periscope Tiberius? And I'm like, yeah, that Tiberius. sounds like the purpose of periscope. Quite honestly, I've yet to find a purpose for periscope, <laughs> the new social media thing. Yeah. Um, but so you have a parakeet yeah, that needs to get its nails. Uh, yeah. So maybe that would be something. That could be something. Yeah. I mean, my parakeet is very tame and he um, he flies around. And in the house? In the house. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, so when I got him, 
he was really scared and shy and um and then do you get a parakeet when they're a baby i i got or a when parakeet young? because i had some wine for lunch <laughs> so i went to the store <laughs> to buy some dog food and i ended up with a parakeet interesting and the next morning i wake up and i thought what, what why do i why do i have a parakeet all right <laughs> Um, how old did I? We had a parakeet when I was a kid, and it, it, we, it wasn't good. But uh, how long does a parakeet live? What's the scoop on a parakeet? My mother has a parakeet that's twelve years old. So that is good. That's good. That's pretty great yeah. to have a parakeet for. I don't know how long a parakeet. I mean, they're not parrots. No, like parrots but, will live for like eighty right, years, right? But they can live around ten years. Okay. But I got him. Um, it's very sweet little thing. And then um, he was terrified of me. And I was reading up on how to how to make a parakeet tame, how to make them talk. And you would yeah. have to sit with your hand in the cage for two hours a day and make him feel used to you, and all these different things. And nothing worked. And I thought this parakeet is disturbed. Right. So um, I was very disappointed. <laughs> and, and I thought maybe I should just let him out because. You know, just I felt him, bad for him. I felt right. It's like he's all lonely, and he's, he's just, just sitting so there. Yeah, and then they cut there. the wings. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and they don't do that in Sweden. They don't cut things off animals here. They cut a lot There's of things. A lot like ears of sculpting and going on. A lot of on cutting. Him. Yeah, yeah. So um, I disapprove. Yeah, I disapprove me too. of the animal sculpting. I mean, no, can you just imagine he's sitting there cutting the wings off? That's his. That's like cutting our legs off, and he's sitting in the right. cage, terrified. So can he fly at all? Well, so then the the wings grow back out. Oh, and then you cut them again. But obviously, I didn't do that. So because right, you're done. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, but then he got. It's interesting. They grow back. He got really sick, and I don't <gasps> know why he got sick. And I called my vet, and I called all these bird rescue places, and I said, "My bird is really sick. He looks like he's dying." And they said, "Well." Finally, my vet said, um, you know, you can take him in, and, uh, you know, and I'll put him down for you to no cost. Wow. And so I, I felt bad. I thought, I can't, I can't do that, but maybe <laughs> I can. So I took the cage and I put it in my car and I drove back to the pet store. Oh, right. And I said, you guys need to take back this bird because it's sick. I don't know what to do. I feel so bad. And right, right. How long had this been? I, it's just been uh, maybe like a, a week? month. A month? My, yeah. And, and they said, no, there's nothing we can do. And I was don't, driving don't around. Bring our, you don't bring go. your bird back. <laughs> All sales are final. <laughs> so then finally I went home and I thought, I'm just going to put him outside um, on a table okay. in, in the sun and wind and see if that maybe helps. And, oh, yeah, and so yeah. I did that for a couple of hours. And then I took him back in. And the next morning he was really uh, healthy again. Okay. And he was making little sounds and... And I called oh, my back. vet and I said, you know, I think he's, I think he's well. And he said, you know, that never happens. It's a miracle. <laughs> right. Well, that and the fact that, I mean, what, what might've happened was, is you uh, were like, you know what animals like outdoors? Yeah. And taking they, a little ride in the car and he needed to see, I think he was depressed. You wanted to see the world a little bit. I think bit. he was actually depressed. He might've been depressed. Yeah. You know, Andy said that when he got the, he got Tiberius, that thing about that's how he tamed Tiberius is he had his hand in the, in the terrarium yeah. for hours. Yeah. And then, and, and Tiberius ran over it, ran over it, ran over it, <laughs> ran over it. And then one time he landed on his hand and he's like, he didn't land on my hand for any other reason than my hand is warm. Warm. Yeah. And he is a cold blooded animal yeah but ever since then he's been okay being handled by me and, yeah, and, and he, he picks him it. up and yeah, yeah. so they they are friends yeah and so it's yeah it's funny how any any animal can show so much affection and what happened was that i i kept the gate to the cage open yeah and um oh just in the day, house yeah oh, yeah okay. so so then one day i was sitting by my computer and uh and he flew out and he landed on my shoulder and since that moment he, We've been lovers. You've been just the biggest friends in the world. But like, he courts me. He's yes. in love with me. I mean, he makes Unlikely. beautiful little sounds. That is... He's so sweet. He sleeps. He puts a little head in my ear. What? And he sleeps in my ear. That is adorable. <laughs> First of all, what is your parakeet's name? Piccolino. 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 What does it mean? It's a. I don't. It's, it's the, a the little one. Of he's something. like the yeah. little one. Yeah. yeah. For he is. Piccolino. And what color is he? He's uh, white with a little bit of uh, gray blue. Okay. Yeah, Bluish very, gray white. Yeah. And and then I have a dog, and the two of them actually. Well, Piccolino is really into my dog. My dog doesn't really care about him. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? I have a little redhead poodle. Well, I'm glad that you don't have a cat. I know. My 
because uh, the cat and the and the bird less exciting. Yeah. I've seen Tweety. I know it's going down. I've seen Sylvester and Tweety. It's not going to go well. What? Uh, and then how long have you had the, the parakeet? Um, I've had him for about two years now. Okay. Oh, so he's working out. Yeah. So we are. And does your family. mom still live in Sweden? She does. Yeah. And so she has a parakeet in Sweden. She has a parakeet. Do you guys Skype? Uh, you know what? I bought her a computer uh, for us to so that we could Skype. Yes. And that was a couple of years ago, even more. And she has Skyped me once. Excellent. So, so. I, yeah, she's not. Yeah, she's. Not, I have to open the computer, and then I need to. Know she's like, I'm just gonna call you. So is I'll just happens? call her. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Okay. But I'm gonna see her in July. Oh, good. Is she coming? Or are you? No, going? I'm going. You're going. I'm All right. Go, yeah. Where? Uh, I've never been to Sweden. Uh, yeah. I understand it's in the north. It is in the north. It is in the north of... Uh, it's very of, cold. It is cold. I'm from <laughs> Wisconsin. Okay. So, which has a lot of uh, Swedish immigrants right. from 100 years ago to 150 years ago yeah. who are like, this is what we left. Let's live here. And you're <laughs> like, that's why? so weird. <laughs> you're like... So that they can grow potatoes. Right. They were yeah. like, when can we start building our stone fences? Yeah. When can that happen? Yeah. And um, yeah, so capital of Sweden... Stockholm. Stockholm? Yes. I just finished a book by a Swedish author, weirdly enough, from really? 1967. It is called The Laughing Policeman. Oh. And it is uh, a mystery uh, mm-hmm. set in Stockholm in yeah. 1967. And it is a dour piece of work. It's very funny. Yeah. It's very dry. And uh, and it is, um, matter of fact, um, I'm going to go grab it. Do you have a, a, tell me a Swedish story while I run into my oh, room. Should I talk just on my own now? Yes. Well, I can tell you... Um, Sweet, a Swedish story. Uh, well, actually, I think it's yesterday I was having dinner with, uh, with a Danish friend of mine and we were talking about how we say things sometimes Swedish people, um, in English and, and we don't really, we put our foot in our mouth a lot. Okay. Cause the, cause the sentence structure or something. Uh, well, for example, um, so when I first moved to New York, I um, I was doing a I was modeling. Okay. And then I got booked for a, a job, hand modeling. Okay. And I um, so I did that job, and then afterwards good, I was meeting good my looking friends. Good looking hands. Good looking <laughs> hands. You. Still working out. So then after I went to have drinks with my friends, and they said, um, "So what do you do today?" And I said, "I do the hand job." Ah, that <laughs> <laughs> that is that that is ah, and the they hilarity. started to laugh, and I didn't understand why they were laughing. I said, right, but I do I do a lot of hand jobs. You know, <laughs> I have good hands, <laughs> and they kept laughing. And I said, "No, but seriously, I needed money, so I, <laughs> I was doing I hand, do the jobs. hand jobs, right?" And yeah, that was one of those things that. It's difficult. different languages. It's funny that anyone would ever mock anyone because let me tell you something. Uh, your English so much better than my Swedish, for example, <laughs> yeah. or anything, <laughs> because uh, I've got nine words in French. Anyway, so uh, but the yeah, so it's oh, this yeah. guy. Oh, the left. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, I know. I know. You've Very, heard of that? Yeah, I have. That author? How do you pronounce it? Um, my Fueval. Okay. And Per Valle. Okay. And they're they're a duo. They're they're yeah. a married couple. Mm-hmm. And they um, ooh, it looks really good. It's pretty good, actually. Incredible I finished fourth it. Fourth novel in the Martin Beck mystery series by the internationally renowned crime writing duo My Chevalier and Pavado finds Martin Beck heading a major manhunt in pursuit of a mass murderer. Well, this is this is actually a show, a TV show, Beck. Oh, right. And, and it was like a Belander. I don't know if you've heard of Wallander. Wallander. How do you spell yeah, it? A W A L L. A N D E R. So they made the the Martin Beck character into a recurring kind yeah. of Agatha Christie yeah. kind of. Well, that's awesome, yeah. but, but for Swedish television. Yes. Okay, yeah. because this was also a very, I'm told, mediocre movie with Walter Matthau mm. from 1968 or 69. Oh, okay. And um, but and I and as much Walter. as I love Walter Matthau. Uh, have I you bet seen you the, the film? TV show. No, no, I just finished yeah. the book, and my husband's reading it now. But yeah. uh, and um. But I would re- watch the yeah. television show because I bet you done in Sweden. Yeah. It's going to be a lot better than some crazy Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau doesn't have a huge range. Right. I don't mean to criticize. The man's dead. I mean, I don't <laughs> think it's going to affect his career at this point if I say that as much as I love Walter Matthau. Yeah. He was, I mean, he was good bears. at what he was doing. Yes. Uh, his girl, he did the remake of His Girl Friday with Walter Lemon, mm-hmm. uh, which was called 
God darn it. No, so they anyway, would go with the names right, again. Right, exactly. So <laughs> but His Girl Friday was great. Yeah. When I was a kid, I loved the remake of His Girl Friday with Walter Matthau and Jack mm-hmm. Lemmon. But, Jack uh, Lemmon, yeah. Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon. And, but in... In in uh, as as I've as I've learned, I just like Jack Lemmon. Yeah, I like Jack Lemmon a great mm-hmm. deal. He's a great actor. And then Walter Matthau was good at what he did. Yeah, and uh, sort of fine. He was uh, like James Garner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm just gonna meander around you, seventy-seven you, you, year old men. Do you like the Stig Larsson trilogy? The uh, of oh, the, the Dragon, Dragon Tattoo. tattoo? Yeah. I do a long bit about how I accidentally read that one one winter. Yeah. Did you read it? I, you know, I read the first one. That's I read the a, first one. Did you see any of the movies? I did, yeah. You saw the uh, the Swedish ones or the American? Both. Oh, you both, saw all yeah. six? No, I just saw the first one. Ugh, so, yeah, so you read the first book and you saw the first yeah. movie in each series? Yeah, I'm, I... Uh, what did you feel? I, hmm. I thought it was well written. I don't, yeah, I think it was... Uh, it was compelling, I was I was a little disappointed. Were you? To be honest, yeah. With all of it, with both um, the book and the. Movie? I mean, I love the dark, gritty stuff. I just I just felt like it was um, a little bit um, trying too hard to be dark um, and right, right, a little sensationalist. Yeah, I'll tell you something. This has a weird sex in it too, mm-hmm. but it has weird nineteen sixty seven sex. Like weird sex that is right. It nice, doesn't have weird, weird twenty twelve sex, which yeah. is. Uh, I, what I my joke about it is that it should have been called uh, the girl who was sexually tortured in the Swedish foster care program. Yeah, because then I wouldn't have or read the it. girl who was torturing, and and then right back at you. Yeah, like I mean, it went full circle, and you're like, well, I don't want to read. And so it turns out, Grandma Cation over here doesn't want to read any of it. Yeah, <laughs> but I read all of it yeah. because by the end of the first book, I was like, well, th- she better live. Mm-hmm. She better live. Mm-hmm. Then I've read all three in a week. And then I was mad at every guy yeah. in the world for a month until it took me until I, fi- I think figured it could out who be to be a mad bit at. More layers to her character. Oh, it was, it was incredibly yeah. black and white. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was. I wanted uh, to see a little bit more of the little nuance and yeah, anything. Yeah. At the end of it, when she's just a hacker living on an island, mm-hmm. you're like, that's the third book. Well, I thought, what you know, if I was living on that island with all that money, I would just. Stay there and enjoy my life. Yeah, maybe Why do some she, yoga. She's, I mean, she's there and she's, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. And she's <laughs> like, why don't you enjoy? Go and have a nice meal and right. get drunk. I mean, or come on. Meet a nice boy and right? have a lovely Settle life. Settle down yes. and get some dogs and a get parakeet. Get dogs and a parakeet. That's and... what I would have done. <laughs> but no, she had to come back and start it all over again. And I blame Go Steve back Larson. to Stockholm of all places where <laughs> she could have been on this beautiful tropical right. island. You're in a tropical island and then Steve Larson is like, nope, she does. I'm not going to yeah. leave her alone. Yeah. I'm going to make that woman come back into crazy Stockholm and then she has to... Ugh. Oh, so and then she has to depressing. fall in love with the twenty-year-old older guy, and I'm like, I get it, Steve. I, know. I get it. Yeah, it's uh, her. It's his. It was his fantasy, I think. Right, and and it's his book, mm-hmm. so it gets to be his fantasy, exactly. Right, and clearly it resonated because people made six movies about mm-hmm. it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a good thing about writing that you can just create your fantasy world or any art. Right now, um, do you write? Do you write scripts? Obviously, but do you write yeah. prose at all? Do you do? Yeah, sc- I do. That's novels? how I started. Just writing. Um, since I was little, I just started writing novels, and but it was my way of creating my own world, the yeah. way I wanted it to be, or something that I wanted to experience. I could go into that world, and it was oh, yeah. safe oh, to yeah. live that, you know, the fantasies. But. Yeah, let's get the hell out. <laughs> yeah. It's like let's, and, but it, it's now people say like when I think about the the char- the lead character in that Steve Larson novel, maybe he would say, "Well, it wasn't my choice." It was the character's choice right. that brought her back to Stockholm. And at which point I'm like, you sure? It's the third book. Well, you they get a say publisher. That, you know, they say, well, as a writer, your characters start doing whatever Things on they want. And, and so he was maybe just saying, wait a minute. Well, you know, maybe he was feeling the same thing, but he can do anything. She just... Right, and then, and then his common-law wife is like, well, there's another book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, every summer we have something called... Um, translated into English would be summer talkers. And so it's a, it's a radio program. Okay. And every summer they have different people, politicians, musicians, artists, so on, um, every day. And they pick a subject that they want to talk about for about an hour. They play their favorite music. Right. And this program <laughs> has been going on for, since I was little. And okay. it's always that favorite 
you get so excited because you look at the schedule, who you want to listen to, and then you're on the beach and you hear them talk. And so anyway, so his uh, widow had, um, Oh, she was one of the guests, one of the guests. And, uh, wow, it's so beautiful. Um, in the end, she was saying after this whole ordeal and, um, you know, the le- legality of... Right, right, because they, her, her, his family took all the money. Yeah. If, if people don't remember, his, 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 I think it was his dad or, and his, and his brother, uh, were like, no, no, uh, because you guys weren't legally married, we inherit all the money. Right. And then yeah. she was like, well, we were together for 26 years. And she was with him throughout yeah. that whole... But, you know, she was saying in the end that after she talked about everything, um, that, what she has learned through the whole experience is about the only thing that matters is people and your relationship with people. Get on that plane, go and see your loved ones. Don't think that there is, you can do it another time or worry about the cost of it. Yeah. And she just, it's so beautiful the way she wraps the whole thing up. And, and then, um, she, she's choosing (laughs) this song, you know, hallelujah by Jeff Buckley. Oh yeah. Oh, and it killed me. Okay. It's such, it's so beautiful. That is beautiful like, because it was bazillion dollars. Yeah. And she's like, I have to, essentially she was like, I have to let it go and think about the people in my life more well, than yeah, anything. Yeah, and I or? think she was looking back at her relationship with him of what, you know, what And what learned. she got out of that. You know, because he best passed away and, yeah. and her, um, you know, trying to come to peace with that, but also... Um, that you know, the only thing that really matters is that when you have people that you love, spend time with them, and that's why now I feel you know I have to go to Sweden. I haven't been there for three years. Oh yeah, my grandmother's ninety-two years old. And, oh yeah, um, you, yeah, you got it. Yeah, so you just let time go by, and um, I um, yeah, just from listening to that, I it made an impact in my life. That's great. That's I mean, that's that's really cool. And she didn't mention the money at all. Well, she did. It was a whole hour, you know, right, talking right. about, yeah, just the way she looks at it and how she feels about it. Good, yeah. good. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, because you do have to let go of the money. Of and, course. And especially if you're never going to get the money, you have to figure out a way to let go of the yeah. damn money and move on with your life. And he wouldn't have wanted her to be, he wouldn't want her to hate him. Right, and right. Good for her for actually being mature enough to go through that process. Yeah, and come I mean, out of she the suffered a lot through it, and she had it. to do a lot of soul searching, and and that's what she's talking about. Of what inner work, the in, yeah, that's it. The Good inner for her. Work, yes, that's it. I'll have to do some inner <laughs> lives once in a while. Why not? Right. And so, how is now? How is being Swedish in Los oh. Angeles? Is there are is there a large Swedish community? I've never seen any. Um. <laughs> this is it. This is my Swedish experience. <laughs> there is, but I, you know, I always say that I left Sweden. Sweden for a reason, and it was to actually get <laughs> to leave leave Swedish people behind, right? Um, but I think after I've been in the states for fifteen years now, and um, now I'm starting to feel, well, you know, I kind of want to be a part of because there's this group of yeah, Swedes who all know each other, and I think I feel. Wait a minute, I feel like an outsider, um, just kind of the way I did when I was little, grew up in Sweden. I always felt different and an outsider, and then I come here, and when I'm around Swedish people, I become that teenager again right and that's sort of that's why i stay away from them but then now i'm thinking you know i'm i don't have to feel that way that's not the truth that's just my what's your head doing that yeah Yeah. so now um um, you you should totally integrate back into it it. are you and i go right in there and uh, last week i was invited to uh, a woman's sample sale party at her house okay and there were a lot of Swedish ladies there, and they, a lot of them had, they were jewelry designers and chocolate makers, and there was some wine and crackers and wow. cheese. Wow. And everyone had two children. Everybody? <laughs> Everybody had two kids? Everyone had two kids. <laughs> were they, thank God, I hope there was one of each, a boy yeah, and a girl. and a boy and a girl. And, <laughs> and they and, were tiny, blonde, oh, yeah. perfect little children. And, you know, and I was thinking, you know, I'm still kind of the outsider and the weird one because I'm the only one who's sing, you know, single and, um, and uh, they all married with their Swedish kids and they go to Swedish school. And so they're very much still in that sort of Swedish mentality state right. of mind, which is lovely, you know, which is just, lo- yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, now, now it isn't the Swedishness that separates them. It's the fact that they all have five year olds and yeah. seven year olds and you're like, well, I, mean, I like five-year-olds, but not a lot. Uh, <laughs> not a thousand of them, and just hanging out with them all the time. Yeah, you know, I'm, um, I'm my, I'm Armenian. Yes, I uh, know. But from Wisconsin, so you come wow. here, and we've melted. 
Right. Like I, my parents, my grandparents came here a hundred years ago. And so they, um, like all, all sets of my grandparents were immigrants. So like my, my dad's parents were from Turkey and Armenia. Yeah. I love Turkey. Oh, I wish I could go to Turkey. Have you been? No, no. I was going to go once. And uh, my dad was like, you know, you go, you got to sign away our land that we own there. (laughs) And I was like, Dad, we don't own any land in Turkey. The Turks are <laughs> never giving us our land back. Did you? Did you? Pl- did Grandma plant like? A, yeah. Did she bury like a cougarand or something? What happened? And he's like, No, no, she would have carried it out. And I was like, Then we don't want the what? What land? Yeah. <laughs> and so, because I would love to go to see oh. where Troy was and oh. and just the the beaches are supposed to be amazing. Istanbul the, is so beautiful. It's it's a fairy tale. Yeah. It's is it just amazing looking? Unbelievable. Mm, you really want to go. You have to go. I know. And as an American, I might be kind of protected. Yeah. You know what I did was Armenians I... Armenians are still third class citizens, right. but as an American, I might get a pass. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> I love that I, pause. I think that uh, what I did was I actually, I have two passports. Oh. So I went there as a Swede. Oh, good for you. Oh, no. Yeah. no. But to go as an American would be fine. That would because, be fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... But my last name is Armenian. Right. Okay. And so well, there might think- be, I, I don't want them getting in my face. Yeah, no, I don't uh, think so. Because I'm, I'm a huge fan of when you go to another country, right. it's like going to somebody else's house. Like if oh, you want me to, good, if I, I, yeah. you want me to take my shoes off at the door, I'll take my shoes off at the I, door. So I went to Saudi. More. I went to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So I had to wear an abaya and a headscarf mm-hmm. when we were out. Mm-hmm. We had to go into the family entrance to the Turkish restaurant. Weirdly enough, uh, right. that we went to, and some people were like, "Well, that's a, that's a, offensive," and I was like. Well, I don't live. I'm not immigrating. Right. I'm not going to stay. I'm a tourist. And you're respecting their traditions. And I'm respecting traditions. their cultures. Right. The, and, and the thing about Saudi Arabia is that they keep sending their women folk out of country for education mm-hmm. to Germany and to the United right. States. Then they come back and they're like, really? I can't drive? And uh, so then they have jobs. And right. then But there's a big movement in Saudi Arabia now because the, their husbands don't want to drive them to work every day. Right. But they want them to work. Right. And so they're like, well, maybe you could drive. Mm-hmm. And so it's slow. But I mean, so, but it's their but fight. I would, I would actually prefer not to drive and have my husband drive me <laughs> everywhere. Who doesn't want someone to drive them everywhere? I know. Why <laughs> are they it, complaining? Come on. Well, because it limits, <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> We get it, Rangers. You know that we get it. <laughs> <They're And shook. laughs> we get it. And so, but it's, but it is, um, it is interesting uh, about, cause, uh, cause Turkey is, it would be lovely. Mm. I would love to go to Turkey. Well, it's that meeting of the East and West. That's just so beautiful and magical. And yeah. the blue mosque was absolutely gorgeous. And I think there's a photo in, on, um, on my page places on my website. That's from the blue mosque. Oh, Wow. That's amazing. Um, beautiful. Yeah. Which, of Food. course, is a Tornberg Photography. Oh, yeah. We were talking about how I got into photography. Yeah, yeah. That was a half right. an hour ago. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so let's go. No, so I, uh, so I wanted to, um, I just wanted to start shooting my own um, videos and little short films and uh, learn about lighting because I think as a director or a filmmaker and as an artist in general, you should learn everything about making a film or creating if you, a Yeah, piece. if you can, it'd be nice to have access to all of the yeah. information. And did you start digitally? I mean... Yeah, well, I, I have been doing photography as a hobby my whole life. Right. But um, I got a really good camera, the Canon 5D Mark II. Oh, yeah? And uh, it has a great video camera. And okay. so that's why I got that, because I wanted to start shooting my own little short films. And then I was living in Malibu at the time, and I'd wake up at 5 in the morning and just walk down the beach wow. and start shooting and... Um, had friends to come that came over and I were, I was taking their photos and then, um, and then I realized that I was getting really good at it and people started to ask me to take their photo and right. portraits and headshots and, and little, little by little, it just kind of grew and, um, yeah, so do I you start do, charging. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> and then you're like, Yes, I will. I'm gonna need some money. Yeah, and, and I thought I'm gonna give myself three months to see if I can uh make this into a business because I wanted to do something full time that I could be, you know Always have. do as a yeah, as a yeah. business, but also something that I love that was creative. I didn't need other people, but just my camera. Yeah. And, and it's also flexible. Yeah. For when, if there are auditions or if you want to stop doing it and make your own thing. Right. You yeah. can do it. That's, that's really neat. Um, I can't remember the name of the guy whose uh, headshot is on the main, uh, 
Danny Trejo. That's Danny Trejo. Yeah. I was like, I know that guy. That guy's yeah. in everything. That guy's amazing. He it's, is amazing. Yeah. Such a nice man. That's uh, and his face is beautiful. He's beautiful. Got, like the greatest. You want to go? You want to travel? <laughs> right. In, in his skin, because right. there are so many like valleys right. and mountains. The aging <laughs> process has actually been really cool to him. Yeah. It's uh, it's working out because yeah. uh, and and it's. Yeah, so they're they're very they're very beautiful pictures. I Thank think. You. Um, and so, so, do you do the processing on? Did you have to learn Photoshop and all that stuff? Yeah, too, but I'm a bit of a computer nerd. I like I love programs. I love to sit and learn okay. all of that. So I, you know, I like to. Oh, work. so it wasn't a problem. No, I just delving into it. Yeah, I just jumped into it. I mean, Photoshop is something that I um, I think is really fun, and um, and then when I shoot videos, I edit on Final Cut, and you know, so I really can you like do Illustrator too. No, I don't know that. Illustrator is is I'm I'm told Photoshop is relatively straightforward, yeah. and then Illustrator should be the same thing. But weirdly enough, it's intuitive, like like it's a it's an angle shift. Yeah, and that once you, it's because uh, Andy is just learning Illustrator, okay. and he's like, I've ha- if 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 I can just t- cock my head to the left a little bit, I can almost get it. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, because it isn't the same as right. Photoshop. It's right. the the tools look the same, but hmm. it is different. And he said, but some of the tasks are kind of neat, uh, okay. but it's more for graphic design. It's yeah. less for uh, f- photography. Yeah, but I think it's again. I think it's just you just have to keep learning and. Keep How long growing. have you been doing the the sort of the professional photography? Yeah, when did you get the fancy camera? Um, I think I got that in. Maybe five years ago. Okay. So uh, since 2012, three years, I've been doing it full time. Oh, that's awesome. That's my job. And and the and the and the fancy camera, it does both video and and still. Yeah, right? and I've gotten new cameras after that. I've oh, gotten the yeah, yeah? updated uh, version. Oh, the updated yeah. version. Do you? Is there a brand you like? Is that Canon? Well, one? it is. Yeah, Canon. They're all Canons. Yeah. So far. And those are the you know, ones? I feel like um, I'm not really that savvy when it comes to cameras, but. Yeah. Um, I think that your camera just becomes a body part. It just becomes a part of who you are. And I know how to treat it. I know how to, you know, it's like, it's like my extension of myself. So it's not like I can say, oh, Nikon, this and that. Yeah. You know, it's it's just, this is my camera that I work with. And it's right. It's the tool that, that, yeah. that you have become yeah. friends with and, and love and know right. how to. And it's just a bridge between my myself and whoever I'm photographing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's fascinating. Cause it's, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's the same with every tool kind well, of thing. it's like a, a paintbrush yeah. or whatever it or is. Or a that, saw right. or whatever the heck. Or a saw or a hammer. <laughs> if, you are a, if you are a Or carpenter, nail clipper. When will I have Paul Gilmartin <laughs> on to talk about his carpentry? I don't know when that's going to happen, but uh, <laughs> it just reminded me. It's a little bit the same thing. Yeah. I think, you know, what people are saying, well, you do photography, you do uh, writing, you... But, you know, for me, it's all the same thing. It's yeah. just a different tool. It's a t- paintbrush or it's a hammer or it's a camera. Right, right. Uh, or, or the keyboard. It's just uh, um, a way to, um, a tool how to, you know, express yourself. And the result is sometimes a photo or a painting or some words. Right. And, ev- and everything that you really like is all about the story. Right. You know, it, yeah. it, I mean, that seems to be the through yeah. line. You're like, it's, it's whether it's visual mm-hmm. or... Of, it's a lot of visual, and um, but it's all kind of visual storytelling, right? And it's kind of neat because there's photography, and then there's also, you know, the music and the and the, I don't know, the writing process. I mean, yeah. all all of it. It it's, it's and the bird of, and the bird. Don't forget about the bird. <laughs> Holy smokes! And and it says here that you enjoy vintage dresses. <laughs> because the thing is, I is do. when I think of a vintage dress, I think of uh, costume people. Uh, because every costume person I've ever met mm-hmm. has been like, well, I love fabric and I love right. uh, patterns. And mm-hmm. and then they go off and they're like, like, look at the way that's cut. And it's a Mad Men kind of 60s kind yeah. of thing. And you're like, yeah, it's blue. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not the greatest uh, clothing wise. So right. I always need help with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, it's, uh, I think that you, you just know what you love. And that, it, it, so if, when it comes to photography, for me, it's about, I know what I love. I know what it is that I want to see. Yeah. And then I use my camera to find the right lighting to to make that happen. 
And then eventually you, you, so you start experimenting and then you find the light and then you remember how that light was and so on. Same thing with, uh, with writing or with uh, filmmaking is that you want to convey something. Yeah. And you start learning how to compose pictures to, in order to convey what it is that you want to say. With, with the beautiful dresses, it's the same thing. I know how I want to feel. Okay. And I, I love the whole feminine 50s style, really pretty ladylike dresses. And if I could, I would wear gloves and hats. <laughs> right, the, the whole thing and have a, yeah. a beautiful handbag. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> sure, why not? But, but I say it, if I could, but I can. You can. See? Especially here. Yeah. It's uh, quite honestly anywhere. Right. And, uh, and I have a friend of mine who's at a steampunk convention this weekend. And, uh, what is and it? Steampunk. Oh. You know, steampunk being the, um, it's a celebration of Victorian clothing. Oh. But also... Uh, there's a futuristic element. It's like a mm. it's like a science fiction <laughs> mashed up with people who love cosplay, who love costumes, right? Okay. So if you took 1890s women's fashion, mm-hmm. right, or 1880s, I, I'm not great, uh, but like bustles and corsets and right. and uh, weird hats, mm-hmm. uh, not weird hats, beautiful hats, mm-hmm. and then you also put like. Uh, the Hindenburg and a dirigible uh, and an old-timey typewriter in it, uh, then that would be steampunk. Mm. It's like somebody's taking a screwdriver, but it's also a telephone. Oh, interesting. And, but it's a future... It's like the sonic screwdriver mm. in Doctor Who mm. is a screwdriver, but it is also a futuristic uh, fancy-pants science fiction device. Sounds a bit like uh, Burning Man. Oh, and I'm sure that there's a steampunk. There's, there's burning. Isn't Burning Man getting high and listening to music, or is you know, that Coachella? I really don't know. I get nervous when it comes to crowds. I just the thought of it makes me want to. I don't like crowds either, but and it's up. weird. Uh, I perform in front of crowds, but I like it when it's just me and. But you have the distance. There is yeah, the distance. So it's you and them, and then I, then I'm more than willing to meet people afterwards. Mm-hmm. But it's usually just two at one a time, one, yeah. or one at a time, and it isn't. Like when I'm trying to navigate a crowd, uh, I want no part of it. Right. Um, and so, but some people love it. They, mm-hmm. I don't know if they, they, they sort of, in, they feel like part of, you know, like yeah. once they get into it, they have more of a hive mind than I do. I think it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's how you are just wired. I think some people really get energy from, from people. Yeah. Um, and I, get exhausted when I'm around too many people. The energy kind of makes yes, me tired. Yes, I am Christ-like, and I walk through a crowd, and people yeah. take my energy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as opposed to, I don't know, probably Christ who actually put out energy. Yeah. Anyway, but I, I don't know a lot about it. <laughs> I don't, know why, I don't know why Jesus got involved uh, here at the minute 40. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's, but Lorraine Newman was on the show and uh, she really loves dubstep and, and electronic dance music. Mm-hmm. And so she goes to Coachella every year. Oh, yeah. Which is a giant mosh pit of humanity. Right. Listening to all different kinds of music. But she always goes to the, to the electronic dance music right. thing, which, I don't think is that Japanese guy at all, right? Because it's no, more but he's actually surreal. yeah, but he is actually one of the, uh, the 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 guys that started it. Oh, really? But his music is not rave like. Oh, it, oh, it, it is very. He it's actually super started, electronic. Yeah. He he was one of the first ones that um, created that kind of music. Okay, but yeah. it's not those fat beats that you can do no. E to so and they're then taking a- stay up for seven days and yeah. knock yourself out and all of a sudden yeah. you're with child. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually uncertain how it all ends. But the thing is, about what I understand from Coachella, too, is that... Yeah. So imagine trying to use the bathroom there and you have to stand in line <laughs> for three hours and there's one... I don't ever want to st- potty or whatever they're called. I and- yeah, I don't ever want to stand in line for anything. No. You know, someone was telling me that uh, there was an amazing donut shop uh, in Portland, Oregon, Voodoo Donuts. Oh, I want to and, go to Portland. Uh, have you seen Portlandia? I have seen Portlandia. Oh, Those obsessed. guys have both been on the Dork Forest. Uh, really? Fred Armisen and Carrie <gasps> Brownstein. Sure. They're oh. comics. Fred's a comic. So, of course, <sighs> I know it. Fred. I, I'm s- in love You're, with them. Oh, do you I'm love so that? I'm so obsessed with that show. It's fantastic. I was just in Portland. My favorite thing that happened in Portland was two friends of mine who are from Minnesota and um, have no reason to be quite as groovy as they are. They're very groovy. And uh, they love Portland with the power of the sun and have lived in Portland for probably 15 years now and have committed to the Portlandia attitude. Mm-hmm. And so I told them that I was staying at a Hilton 
a double mm-hmm. tree Hilton. And they both got sad separately. <laughs> and they were like, I'm so sorry that you have to stay at a Hilton. You know, there's like a boutique hotel kind of right by there. And I was like, I don't ever want to stay at a boutique hotel. <laughs> Am I schlepping my own luggage? Is there no sound barrier? Is there room service? I'm a huge fan of there being 800, no, 450 thread. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the fanciest, <laughs> but I just need a nice sheet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so Portlandia, it's full of people on tall bicycles who do taxidermy. And hipsters with... A lot of beards. beards a lot yeah. of beard yeah. action. The mm-hmm. beard thing is funny to me because uh, it's almost over. <sighs> I hope so. It's uh, And my theory... It's very confusing. Is it? Yeah, because, you know, as a woman, you see it and you go, oh, testosterone, manly. He knows how to oh. change tire. <laughs> but he doesn't. Not so. He Not so. He his nails <laughs> and has his special comb for his, ha- for his beard. Right. It isn't a beard that says, I am capable. It is a beard that says, I wanted to grow a beard. And, uh, but yeah. I, my theory of why they wanted to grow a beard is because no women under the age of 30 have pubic hair anymore. Uh, and oh. so my theory is that they want to bring some hair down there because yeah. they don't want to have sex with a nine year old. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's very mature of them. Very emo. Very, yeah. Very, uh, very, very Well, feminist. I mean, it's, it's, it's tickly. That it's, I, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> there we go, folks. And we're into sex here in, here in, uh, oh, yeah. but, but what I like, um, okay. So now you have clearly a dog and a cat, a, a, wait, no, a dog and a no, bird, a bird. Do you have just one dog? I have one dog. One dog, and it's this red poodle. Mm-hmm. Is it red or is it's it? It's called auburn? a redhead. Red okay. poodle. I met some. Poodle. I met something called a lemon beagle yesterday. It did. It looked like a, a lemon. Ju- no, it looked <laughs> like a like a golden lab in a beagle body. Huh. It looked like a mashup. Oh. I wish she had just said it was did a rescue. Did they just make up that? That breed? I've never heard of a lemon. Have you ever heard of a no, lemon beagle? No, I think they Mm-mm. just make things up. Yeah, she just made it up. It was a cute pup. I yeah. mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a very adorable puppy. Yeah. But uh, whatever. I don't think a lemon beagle exists. No, I think I've never that, heard of that. Right. So this is a redheaded poodle? Yeah. And uh, is uh, how old is your dog? He's 13. He's getting really old. Oh, that is yeah. uh, mid-sized or little? He's a little toy. toy he's, size. So he's uh, 11 pounds. Okay. And he's getting tired. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And so we're a little worried. Does he have a he's... service vest? Um, he does. Of... Does he? Yes. Nice work. <laughs> well played. That'll help you out on the airlines. We're a little and... worried that he's going to go to doggy heaven. He will eventually, sadly, yeah. go to doggy heaven. It's it's really scary. I don't know how I'm going to function or survive that. Well, you'll well, have to get a new dog. Get a new I'm dog. so sorry. I, Jackie Cation, empath. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much with the empathy. But I do, but, um, yeah, I mean, my mother died like three years ago. Yeah. New I'm mother. Sorry. New mother. Oh, yeah. No, 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 I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, I got a rescue. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> it was, uh, but it was, it is, no, it's really, it, it is harder than you think it is when, when anyone or anything in your, mm. in your life dies because you're like, Oh, well, first of all, it means that I'm going to die. Mm. And you will notice I'm not great with it. Right. The, my whole family, shitty at grief. We don't allow it in other people. My, you, you, can, you can preemptively grieve. Um, so my mother dies. So every time the phone rang at like <sighs> 2 in the morning afterwards, I was like, oh, fine. Someone else is dead. And uh, oh, no one else God. died, uh, yeah. it turns out. My father uh, had a heart surgery and there was troubles. He survived. Spoiler alert. Uh, it's all working out. Um, but but I, I've, I've taken to turning my phone off yeah. when I go to bed because I'm like, you know it's what? If they, if they die, they die. Yeah. Uh, they'll still be dead in the morning. Yeah. I will have gotten eight hours. Check my voicemail. I'll check my voicemail. And then I will, because I'm not going to, what, what am I going to? You should leave that on your answer. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody is calling me because somebody died, call me back at 10 a.m. I am not the hero of this story. <laughs> My fellow fellow rangers of the dark forest, it's true. But uh, I wanted to talk to you about other things on this list. Oh, cooking. Cooking. Do you enjoy cooking? I like cooking, yes. Do you enjoy cooking or baking? Oh, I don't like baking at all. And I, I don't, don't like, like ba- cookies or cakes. Oh, you, oh the, I, cake is not my downfall. I am not, uh, I'm not much of a sweet tooth person yeah, myself. Yeah, I don't really understand people like cupcakes. I think it's, cupcakes is a little disgusting. It's a mess. Yeah. And it's I don't all mind a piece of cake. And, oof. You don't like any of it? No, I don't What like about any a brownie? It. No, it's just sweet. The only thing that I like that it's what I make. You don't mind a small chocolate, right? Like small? Mm, I'm not a really... If you had cheese here, oh, then I would eat it all. More savory. Yeah. More savory. Okay. But I make something that's really yummy, which is um, apple crisp. 
Okay. With uh, That's a dessert-like food. It is, but I don't make it that sweet. I make it really crunchy, and mm-hmm. I put a little bit of pecan pralines in it. Oh. So it's it really crunchy, a little salty. Okay. And then some vanilla ice cream that melts on top. It's yeah, so I like good. ice cream. Mm. For, uh, my favorite kind of cake is ice cream cake. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, because then I just, I just want a slice of ice cream cake, and then <laughs> I will eat all of the chicken. All of the chicken that can yeah. be done. Do you have a chicken recipe that... Uh, um, yeah, what's your I do. favorite thing to cook? I, well, well, if we do chicken, then I like to use. I like to buy a whole chicken and just chop it up, and then yeah. fry it with some garlic and um, and just with the skin. I like all the fat. Yeah, and, the skin and the bone. Yeah, uh, it is a crime. Skinless, uh, boneless chicken yeah. breast. Uh, fine if you need to do that in your weird uh, restaurant and right. then put it on top of iceberg lettuce. Right. But I want no part of it. And uh, But make a chicken. Yeah. Really and then if you have to, take the skin and bone off and then put that on top of iceberg lettuce, yeah. I guess. Mm. And then do a Japanese thing where you take the chicken skin and put a, uh, a skewer through it and then you broil the chicken skin Ooh. and then just eat the chicken just skin. The skin. Just the skin. I love the skin. <laughs> It's the greatest oh, food in the world. Christmas. The Japanese are the only ones who are like, yeah, we're just going to sell you some skin. And they, they are some of the healthiest people on this planet. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I like to make a paella. You know, oh, I used to live Spanish. in Barcelona. Oh, did you live in Barcelona? Yeah. I used to live in, yeah. So I went to the market and I yeah. would, on a Sunday would buy all the food and then go home and make a big paella for my friends. And Is that a fish stew? Well, so it's basically a lot of, you know, the traditional food is always based on the poor time. So you, yeah. you would put whatever you had in there yeah, yeah. and then put a lot of saffron in it, that spice saffron yeah. to make it taste strong. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it became this paella recipe that now everybody thinks is so amazing, but it yeah. actually is a poor man's food. Oh, all the poor man's food. It's just, the best. Yeah. Right? It's the best. Yeah. Cause poor people had to make it taste like something yeah. cause all they had were pig's feet. Exactly. <laughs> so we are going to make pig's feet like taste pig's like a meat. Too, I, I don't mind a pig feet. <laughs> I don't eat them a lot. So what I do is that I put the, I take the chicken and okay. um, I. Do with, you bake it first? No, no, no. I just okay. I put a, I have a big pan and then I put the garlic and the chicken and lots of olive oil, turn around, make it really crispy, and um, then I start putting a little bit of cr- uh, crushed tomatoes or just okay. chopped tomatoes in there, and um, and then saffron. Okay, a lot of saffron. Like for 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 an entire chicken, are you talking a tablespoon of saffron? Well, saffron comes in these threads. Those threads, yeah. yeah. So you put you put that in a bit of water and let yeah. it sit for a while, and then just pour it in. I usually like a quarter cup of almost water? like at the half of the amount of that's in a in in the in um, a tiny, jar that you a, buy from the store. I have a tiny jar of saffron. Yeah. Very expensive saffron. Very expensive. Yeah, it's weird. So, so how the many most expensive? Spice. Ever yeah. so, it's weird that the poor people were really into it back in the day. Well, no, it's I think it's because it, well, I think they had a lot more of it because it was in the south of Spain and, and that's where it yeah. grew. Right. Yeah. Well, they had all the influence from uh, North North Africa. Okay. So they would have a lot of those spices where did, in their in the food. Do you know? I have no idea where saffron grows. Me either. Oh no! Oh, oh. saffron. Where does it grow? Um, I feel I, like it came from India. I'm not sure. I will. Somebody sure. yell at the, their yeah. iPod right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Indonesia. No, I don't know. But, so um, then I put saffron in there, and then I put rice. In with the chicken. In with the chicken and the saffron and the tomato and the garlic. But have you baked any of it yet? Well, the chicken is sort of slowly cooking. And then I put rice in there. Oh. And, and I make it like a risotto. Okay. I start pouring wine. Okay. White wine? White wine, Got it. and then I stir until the liquid is gone, and then mm-hmm. I put some more wine and some more wine. So this is a long process. It took a couple hours? Uh, Three? No, no, no. Maybe no. an hour. Okay. Because I love a fiddly recipe. Yeah. I did three days making the North Carolina pulled pork one time. Oh. It was amazing. I want to learn uh, how to do that. Oh, I have the recipe. Okay. I'll hook you up. Thank okay. You. So, uh, but the, uh, so this takes maybe an hour. Hour and well, a half? the whole thing takes about an hour. And then okay. I do, um, on the side, I saute the sh- whatever seafood I buy, okay. shrimp or and chorizo. Right. And, um, I do some mussels, and then I use the liquid from the mussels in mm-hmm. the paella. And you just keep pouring things in there until you feel the consistency is right. perfect. Right, stone soup. Some um, uh, sweet peas. and. Um, what, do you do a sweet pea there at the end of it? Yeah. Because you can't have those too soon. No, you do it in the end. Yeah, kind of because mm-hmm. they're, they're nice because the way they crunch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then there's lots amazing. of wine. And, sure. And that's it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's, that is an amazing, that sounds like an amazing chicken recipe, quite honestly. I made four kinds of chicken the other day, had a, had a little barbecue. Wow. But didn't want a barbecue. How do you, what's your, um, advice to make the chicken sort of juicy and not so it doesn't get dry? Well, there's different ways to do that, of mm -hmm. course. You got your, you got your marinades. Right. Uh, but I do a, a very basic chicken of the guts that my, my stepmother had that it was the only thing she was really good at. She could make a chicken and it would taste amazing. And it's just baked chicken. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, is you cut up a whole chicken, you put it in a, in a line tinfoil, is what I do. And I just do salt, pepper, and garlic. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a tiny, like, like a teaspoon of butter and then cut it into, yeah. and then dab it and then bake the hell out of it for 45 <laughs> minutes to an hour at 400. That's it? No liquid? Just that? No liquid because what, and then the variation on the theme, what you can do is you could take a nice bread, like a nice rosemary uh, garlic loaf from mm -hmm. the, uh, from, from the old bakery. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you oh, bake a chicken on top of that bread, you have chicken bread. Oh. You have essentially schmaltz soaked mm. bread mm. That then you just want to eat that. Yeah. And, uh, and then moving on in other chicken recipes, there is a, I have a Moroccan recipe that's a coriander, cumin, cinnamon mm -hmm. with, uh, with, a um, couscous. You can, yeah, with an apricot couscous, mm -hmm. you can do an apricot couscous with that. But, uh, and then the other one is, a uh, um, a, it's a cumin, uh, mint yogurt. Oh, that I with love. With lemon. Love. And if you marinate that. You need the, to go to Turkey. I do need to yeah. go to Turkey. Um, uh, I, but you know what? I'm, we're going to, we're going to France. We're going to, go, I've never been to France. You've never been to France? Okay. Yeah, we're going to go to Paris and then we're going to go to the south of France and go look Ooh. at, uh, those uh, Neolithic caves where the Neolithic okay. cave paintings are in the south of France. Mm -hmm. You don't actually get to see them. Uh, you stand next to them and they have a virtual tour of them because otherwise you're going to use your horrible human breath and ruin them. Oh, so, yeah. uh, but, Andy really wants to see the nail of the cave paintings, and I really want to have a croissant and a cup of coffee. Yeah. So that's why we're going to the, we're going to There's fly to There's a Leon. restaurant that's one of my favorite restaurants in, in the, the world. world. Uh, that's in Ramatoel, which is outside of Saint Tropez. Okay. I think it's called Chic. I think it's called Chic. Is Saint Tropez on the ocean yes. or on the Mediterranean yeah. or yeah, something? Yeah, Mediterranean. I don't know if we'll make it that south. Okay. We're flying into Lyon okay. and then driving. We're not even going to make it to Marseille. Okay. So. But there's, but someone, anybody in uh, Saint Tropez, here's a restaurant recommendation. Well, now I can't remember the name of it, but I, th <laughs> I think it's called Chez Camille, uh, and it's they only make boulebaz. You know boulebaz? It's a soup, fish soup with fish saffron. Soup. With saffron. With saffron. Okay. And um, so you have to, when you call and make the reservation, you have to do that the day before, and when you show up, they only have one seating. Okay. Seating or sitting? Uh, one sitting. I don't know. The, uh, there's one time when you can sit down and eat. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the restaurant I, I think has... it's called a seating. Yeah, seating. Okay. And so you show sure. up, and it, they only, they're only open for lunch. Okay. And when you show up, they have the pot with your name on it. So they oh, they've start made cooking. lunch for you. They start cooking the day before. They make this bourbaz, and you sit there for three hours. And, and eat you your eat and, bourbaz. And it's right by the ocean, the Mediterranean Ocean. It is Holy hell. so amazing. Well, that sounds uh, unstoppable. Yeah. I, yeah, we may. Let's just drive there. We're going to rent a car in Lyon okay. and then drive around a little bit and go to these two cave sites. We were going to go to four. And I was like, oh, we've <laughs> never been to Paris, you know. We have to go to Paris. I would like to go to Paris. Went to France to go to the caves. Right. And, okay. and it will That's be very beautiful. The, yeah. And I'm sure they have croissants and espresso <laughs> in, in tiny towns in the You're south of France. I am going to love it. It's we we went to Hong Kong last year, mm -hmm. and uh, but I had I had a gig. I was told when we got married um, that uh, I should by no means ever do stand up on our honeymoon mm -hmm. and on um, sort of vacation ones. Right. Like if he comes with me because I'm booked, and then we turn it into a vacation, right. that's different. Okay. But if we're going to go to France. Don't try to pick up a set so we can write it off. Right. And uh, 
<laughs> so, and he shouldn't have a meeting for video game design okay. so that we can write it off. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, some comics have told me that that has actually been a point of contention mm-hmm. in their divorce proceedings. Oh, really? Yes. So, note to self, uh, treat it with some respect, <laughs> uh, your relationship. Yeah. Uh, Maria Tornberg, yes. this has been awesome. Oh. It has been an hour, by over? the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's been amazing. And uh, But you're Thank on you. Instagram, on Tornberg Maria, and yes. on Twitter, Maria Tornberg. Maria Tornberg.com, TornbergPhotography.com, and Super Troopers 2. Where is the, um, where's the petition? Um, is it's it closed? Or is, I think it's on org. It's actually on my uh, Instagram. Okay. I put it up there because yeah, I yeah. thought, you know what? I'm going to encourage people to sign. <laughs> encourage people to sign. And I bet you if you Google it, uh, you'll find it. Yeah. And, uh, I'll tell you something about uh, people who listen to this show. They know how to use the internet. They do, yeah. So, yeah, they have some mad skills. This was fascinating. Thank you so Thank much you for so doing much the for show. Having me. You're welcome. And take care of each other out there. Bye. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?